the bro flow haircut. That is what we're doing today. And this is the mannequin I'm using today. So for everyone who's always asking me, this is from Pivot Point and this is the Samuel mannequin, right? So everyone's always asking me, where do you get your mannequins from? So that's what I'm using today. What is the bro flow haircut? So it's technically a kind of medium to longer length hairstyle on guys and it consists of some layering and also keeping some of the length throughout the back here. I've done a lot of videos, you know, on my channel with this type of haircut, but there's a number of things I want to go over. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, so I'll be breaking down everything as I'm cutting it. So I know a lot of you guys like when I do that kind of stuff and I give you my in-depth tutorials. So make sure you follow along, especially towards the end, so I can help you guys understand what to say to your stylist or your barber or whoever's cutting your hair, because there's a lot of things that you really need to understand. So firstly is, you know, the type of maintenance that you want to apply to this haircut. Since it is a little bit on the longer side, you're going to have to involve some maintenance to it, right? A bit more maintenance, like using good shampoo and conditioner, maybe using something like 25 spray. You want to make sure you're combing it out pretty thoroughly and also uh, making sure you're using the right hair product. Something like my product Shadow is great or Tidal Wave, my sea salt spray. Those are really great products for these types of haircuts, especially if you're trying to get a little more texture out of it. What hair type do you need for this? Well, I would say thick hair or fine hair. Make sure you have a lot of fine hair if you have it. Uh, wavy, something on the wavy side. You can do this with straight hair. I'm obviously cutting this on a mannequin with straight hair, so it can be done on straight hair. You just really need to know and understand how to actually style your hair and get the look that you want. But it really it comes down to having the right haircut. So let's get started with the haircut. The first thing you want to do is you want to establish where your natural parting is. And how you do that is you brush your or comb your hair back and then you can push the hair forward and it's basically the hair will tell you, hey, this is where I want to naturally part. So this mannequin right here kind of has like an off center parting close to a side part. You want to make sure that you're getting your hair cut to match up your natural parting because that's where your hair naturally wants to go. So now that we found that, I'm going to be sectioning the hair into four quadrants. One here on one side, one here on the other side, and then one section right down the middle in the back. So we then have a uh, two panels in the back as well, right? One here and one here. So it's really just four sections. And most of the time, why we use sections? It's just to get the hair out of the way and to make it a lot easier and neater to comb through and to see kind of where you're cutting. What I end up doing a lot of the times is I'll just create one big piece throughout the back here. You know, so what I'm going to do is establish the length first and the length is really how long the hair is right now, depending on you, you can really wear this, whatever you want and however long you want. But for this video, I am going to cut some hair. We are going to leave a little bit of length, but we're going to cut about that much off. So this is probably just touching you know, just touching the shoulders or so in the back. And literally I'm just cutting a straight line straight across. And this is, pro it seems like it's the easiest part of the whole haircut, but establishing the length and creating the foundation is the most important part of the haircut. Because if you don't have a good foundation, then you can't build upon that. It's, again, it's like, it's like when I say it's like building a house, you need a good sol solid foundation before you can build anything on it. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just establishing my length here and I'm following my guideline, which is what I previously cut. Now I'm taking these corners here and I'm holding them back this way. So as you can see, it's leaving a little bit of length in through here, which I'll take off when I go into the sides. Starting on this side here, it's time to now connect this into this. And what's crucial about this part is you have to realize how long is this front piece going to be 
in conjunction with how long the back is. Because if you don't have them balanced enough, or if the front is way too short and this is way too long, it may end up looking like a mullet. And that's cool if you want that type of look, but I'm not going for a mullet today. I want to create a nice flowing kind of seamless look. Now I'm going to have my fingers pointed upwards. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow me to see clearly exactly where I want my shape here, but it's also putting myself in a good body position and I'm cutting downwards this way. Now the last piece right in the very, very front here, again, I'm going to hold my, my fingers and hold the hair pointed upwards. This, your fingers will basically control how the hair is going to be cut and how long it is. What I've done is I've created a seamless angle going from shorter all the way down into longer down in through here. Now, depending on your hair type, your past haircuts and all that kind of stuff, it all depends on what's going on in through here. A lot of times maybe there's a gap or a hole that was cut accidentally last time. You know, what you need to do is just cut around it and let the other hair grow into it. Unfortunately, I've seen that it happens with men and women. You know, if it, the hair isn't properly cut, they're going to end up taking off too much hair and you're going to be left with a hole, which is not good. Now what I'm doing is I'm connecting and doing the same thing we just did, but now we're doing it on this side. So also keep in mind, because I mentioned and, sh and, and showed that we're doing a side parting here, the hair, m m more hair may be coming off on this side and it may appear to be like that uh, just because there's less hair on this side. So you have to make sure and here's the, the flow right there. You have to make sure that when you're cutting this, the balance is there, right? The balance is there and you do that by holding the hair out like this and pulling down on the sections. And yes, we're even Steven, <laughs> we're even Steven. So now the foundation is cut. What does this mean really? This means that if the client were to get out of the chair and leave, they're still left with a good foundation haircut, meaning this is an actual look. You can wear this look. Now, it may not be have the nice flow and everything, but since we created the angle and it's perfectly symmetrical, that's a huge start and a huge uh, part of the haircut. Now we have to work on the internal shape. Now, I'm gonna, I know I'm wearing a black shirt like always, <laughs> so I'm gonna try to stand as far away from this where you can see the contrast with the white. So what we're doing now is creating the layers in the back of the head. Why is this important, this first section right in through here? Well, if you take this and you cut it too short, remember you've got the front piece here and then you've got the back and this is going shorter to longer, which means you have to create something that is going to blend from this length here into this. You've got all this hair in the middle that needs to be connected. So if you cut this too short, then it's going to create a very off balance shape. If you have enough room and you leave some length in through here, you've got room to connect this into this naturally, right? Which will be a lot easier. So you definitely don't want to go too short in the back. And you also definitely uh, don't want to go and leave it too long. So let's take our section. I just want to lower the, lower the mannequin a bit for you so you can see. There, I'm going to take it up right here. That's, I think, is a good length. And I'm going to cut straight across. There's my first section right here in the back, the top back of the head. Then what I like to do is I like to separate the front and the back. And now is where we start to really create the flow, right? The bro flow and the movement and the layers. I'm taking a horizontal section right there and I'm, I see my guide from where I previously cut. And look, we're cutting it straight across. Hold on, don't let go. Take our next section right underneath that and I'm probably doing, I'd say, half, three quarters of an inch or so sections. Comb it straight up. There's the longer hair as you can see. There's my guide underneath. The guide is what you previously cut. 
and then I'm going to drop this down. So I did three sections horizontally. I'm going to do the same thing now on the other side. And, and the way I'm doing this is I'm taking the point, that's why my combs right here, these are my combs that I sell on my website, shop.thesalonguy.com. That's what this is for, this little uh, spacing right in here. It allows you to go in and cleanly section the hair, right? That's what that's for, in case people are, are wondering. <laughs> All right, so there we go. I'm gonna mirror what I did on the other side. I'm standing right in front of where I just cut, taking my next section. And, and if you follow these steps, I mean, it really makes it so much easier to follow. Anyone can do this. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Although I've been a stylist for over 20 years now, uh, I wish you luck, but this is a very simple way to follow this along. And uh, it, it really, it works. I do this, this is how I cut hair. <laughs> All right, so there's my last piece. So we've got even balance now. What this is doing, it's making this completely even. The entire back of what we just cut is perfectly symmetrical and perfectly even. But don't forget, we still have the lower half to do. We're not done. We cut from here to here. We have all this hair now that needs to be worked in. So how do we do that? Now we're gonna cut everything vertically. And I'm combing the hair, holding it straight out from the head, and we're gonna go all the way downtown, down to the bottom. There's the length that needs to be left. And all we're doing now is cutting what is laying on top of that length, right? And that's how you're balancing everything. Now we've got a perfectly blended section from top to bottom on the back of the head, and the hair is gonna flow Beautifully. I'm working from center to my right, and there it is. There's the guide. You don't want to cut anything down here. You're cutting what's on above it or on top of it, which is the weight. So you want to, that's how you maintain that length. The minute you start cutting all the hair at the very bottom, that's when you start running into trouble. Right behind the ear now, I'm going to comb the hair straight back and pull the hair towards myself and my body to protect and, and maintain the weight because the weight is what's needed. This is how you get holes and things in the haircut is if you hold this out the wrong way and you don't maintain that weight, you comb this down and all of a sudden you got this huge gap. The best way to maintain that weight is to comb the hair straight back, trim what's needed and to keep that hair which you can then remove when you work onto that other side. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing comb the hair straight back, and simply now we're going from the center to the left side. And you notice that I'm really just taking a few combs, locking my fingers in, and then making the cut. There's not a whole, it, it's not super complicated, but it's like connecting the dots really is what, it, what it's doing, is connecting the dots and piecing the hair cut together. If you comb the hair and you don't see your guide or you don't see you know, the, the hair that needs to be cut, simply go back in and take a thinner section, meaning don't take as much hair, because if the hair section, or there's too much hair in it, you're not gonna be able to see the guide. So the best thing to do is just to go back and take less hair, and the guide will be visible. So now we're in our last section here. I'm combing now on top of the section, pushing it away from me. There's the length, there's the excess kind of weight here that we're just gonna be trimming up and we'll be taking off when we get into that back corner. Now what I like to do, I know we, brought, we breezed through that pretty quickly. What I like to do is go in and cross check everything. And the way I cross check, and that's basically to tell if your haircuts are even or not, is I'm going to comb the hair in a different direction and I'm changing my body positioning because what that's gonna do is that is going to work the hair in a different way than you just did, meaning that it's gonna expose things that you didn't see when you were cutting it. To me, this is somewhat painful at times because I'm saying, oh my gosh, I was that, une that off. <laughs> but this is the best way to actually see what is going on internally in the haircut so that you can produce really accurate cuts, right? And it's, it's I know it's an additional step, but it's much needed. 
If you are a stylist or a barber watching this, please let me know because I love fellow professionals and I love to know that I'm teaching somebody something that they can have a big takeaway from. You know, I know a lot, I get a mixed audience of people, regular consumers who watch my videos because they want inspiration for their haircuts. But I love the fact that as being a professional myself and have, having trained and taught thousands and thousands of stylists, I get a lot of satisfaction knowing that people are getting value from this that can actually use it, whether it's on clients or you know whatever they're doing. But I, I do, I let me know in the comments below uh, if you're a professional or not, or, or if you find these videos helpful. So now it's time to, guess what? I've done this in every tutorial, but it's time to connect the top back into this part. So how do we move forward from here? We want to leave the past behind and move ahead. So how do we go about doing that? We do that by simply connecting. And what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the head this way because I want to be cutting towards the face. Right, and again, I'll stand as far away so you can see. Let's see what we got. All right, there is the guide. And there's the new hair right there, as you can see. All I'm gonna do is cut that longer hair, and guess what, now we're connected. So I'm gonna do this throughout the entire top back of the head, and there we go. I'm gonna continue on the left side. I'm not gonna go into the actual sides, because guess what? We're not at the sides yet. We're, now we're working on the top. From this part on, I want you to think of three things. The top, the corners, and the sides. The top, the corners, and the sides. If you follow that pattern, then you'll be in good shape. So now what we're doing is we're taking kind of a mohawk section right down the middle here. I'm gonna take a section from what we've already cut because now we don't have to worry about connecting it. It's already connected. There is the guide and I'm going to cut straight across. Now I'm going to take my next section and a little bit from my previous so I can see the guide of how, long, how short I need to cut it. And as we get closer to the front, you're going to notice that there's not a lot of hair to come off because guess what? We did such a good job of blending everything that we're in good shape. All right, so now we've got that done. Again, it's not over yet. We have the corners and the sides. So what we're gonna do now is cut the corners. And the corners is where the, hair, the head rounds out. So I'm gonna hold on to that just like we did in the, pat, in the back. And here is the part where that weight is. But now we're protecting it because we've got our length. You know, and that's why you save that if you get rid of it, there's nothing to cut. And then sometimes stylists have a tendency to cut too much hair. And guess what? That's what causes the holes and the gaps. And that's not cool to do that. <laughs> All right, now I'm combing the hair straight out. This is technically the sides. Let me get out of the way. Watch that drop. So what's happening is I'm cutting only the essential hair that needs to be cut for the shape and you'll see it just like that. Hold on, don't let go. Go down to the very, very side here, which is right above the ear. I'm combing it straight out from the head. There's the length we need, and now we're getting rid of the, the weight. And also what this does is we're actually connecting everything. I use the word connect or connection in a lot of my videos simply because that's the whole concept of Cutting hair is that it all needs to connect and it needs to blend in. Great, so now this side is done. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm standing the same exact spot. So in this scenario, if it was a human, you would just turn the chair fully around so that they're now facing towards your direction. So you're not putting yourself in a very awkward, uncomfortable situation or body position. Now I'm gonna go down to the sides. There's that weight right there that needs to come off. We've protected the length there and now we're good. So as you can see there, as I'm cutting this, that's why it's really essential. All right, so now I'm holding on. We're almost, and believe it or not, we're almost done with the haircut. So I know a lot of you may be watching this saying, is this the Timothy Chalamet haircut? 
Uh, kind of. His hair may be a little bit longer in the front, but this is, this is basically the way to achieve this is by using th these hair cutting techniques, right, and this method. So now the last part is to go in and check to make sure it's all blended in together. So I'm going to take my section right here. I'm going right down toward, I'm actually going on top of the side part right here first. I'm combing the hair straight out and there are a few pieces that I need to, to balance, which is totally okay. Because sometimes it's just one little snip, right? One little hair or piece that's just got away from us and it's totally okay to cut it if it's not balanced with the rest. And that's, this is another form of cross-checking. So I'm standing right here, combing everything up, looking for that balance, and there it is. Don't forget the other side here. This side has more hair because it's parted on the opposite side. So it may seem off or things may seem a little you know, uneven, but don't worry, it's not because uh, of the parting, right? So let's bring this mannequin up here. Let's see what we got here. All right, let me put my, my tools down and let's run our fingers through it. So, so yeah, this kind of almost is like the Timothy Chalamet, except his hair is a bit shorter uh, down and through here. His hair is probably about right here, but the same exact kind of technique. Now, I, I know a lot of people are gonna say, you know, oh, my hair parts down the middle or my hair parts on the other side, what do I do? Just go with your natural part. So this mannequin, as you saw, the hair parts on this side. So if you want to have more volume, something a little bit more different, as you can see, look, look what happens. When you go opposite of how your hair naturally parts, you're gonna get more volume and more lift. If you are looking to wear this hairstyle and have it be very flat to your head, then you go with your natural part. If you're looking to get some volume and some texture out of it, and you wanna have that kind of that messy look or that scrunchy look or that curl type wavy look, then this is the best way to do it. Now, when it comes to products, this, my Tidal Wave spray has become like my number one selling product compared to, uh, alongside with uh, 25 spray. Tidal Wave, which is found, I also have it on Amazon and on my shop, is a great sea salt spray. And I'm only spraying about f five to six spritzes of it. You don't want to overspray it because you don't want the hair to feel too kind of sea salty. It'll get a little bit kind of chalky. So what you want to do is if you're looking to get kind of a little bit of texture like this, right? Let the hair air dry, right? Let it air dry, scrunch it in. And when the hair is fully dry, maybe an hour or hour and a half later, then you can go in and you can kind of restyle it. You can kind of rework it a little bit. Let's show on the sides right into here what this looks like, All right? Let's show the back because I know a lot of you guys like to see the back. The key to this is, as you can see, it's seamless. There's, it's got seamless layers to it. You can't see any chops in it. It's got a great flow, and this is kind of like the bro flow haircut. Uh, what you can do also is if you are looking for something a bit more sleek, you go on your, on your natural part, and then you just work the product in your hands, and then you can use your fingers as a tool to kind of work this down this way, right? Sometimes your hands are gonna be your best friend and your best styling tool when it comes to your hair because you can just literally ma manipulate the whole thing. Let's just toss this up again. I think it looks better with the messy kind of look. And don't be afraid to let your hair air dry, especially on longer hairstyles like this. You know, and how do you keep it tame looking? By spraying some product in, leaving it in. If you were gonna blow dry it, I would say put the speed setting on very low. Doesn't really matter what the heat, the heat setting is fine on normal heat, but put the speed setting on low so you're not blow drying your hair all over the place and making a big mess out of it, right? The best thing to do is to let this kind of naturally dry and take shape. Here is a close up of the haircut and I wanted to show you guys right here so you can see close up of what the layers look like. So when you brush your fingers through it, you're gonna see all this layered and layer and texture. Now, when it comes to hair lengths, people always want, how long is it, how long is it? The front comes down to just, I'd say below the, 
lip, the top lip here. Definitely it's, it's past the ears, down to almost past the jawline. I mean, again, this is a longer haircut, but the layers are about right here. So if you pull your hair up and it's this long, then you're good to go. A lot of other questions I get is how long, you know, how do I grow my hair to get it to look like this? Just keep growing it. Grow your hair until it looks like this. Then find somebody who knows what they're doing and can give you a good haircut. So, all right, let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay safe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for more videos with a salon guy.